Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti from AnthonyMorganti.com and this is episode 11 of Learn Adobe Photoshop Elements. And in this episode, I'm going to show you how to swap a sky. About a week ago in my Photoshop for Photographers videos, I showed how we could swap a sky and I used these two images, this one here with kind of a blah sky and this one that has a more interesting sky and I took the sky out of this one and I dropped it in this one and I got a lot of emails from people asking me if you could do this in Elements and sure you could do it it's relatively easy so I'm gonna show you how what we're doing is we're starting out in Lightroom too because I do get a lot of questions people are confused how to get images out of Lightroom into Photoshop or into Elements and then once you're done editing there how you get them back into Lightroom so I'm gonna show you all that today what you should do though is process your images as you normally would in Lightroom. So I, I, my images are processed and ready to roll. When you're uh, done with that, what you want to do is you want to go down to the um, thumbnail panel that's at the bottom here and you want to select them both. So click on one, then hold the command or control key, command if you have a Mac, control if you have a PC, and click on the second one. Then what you're going to do after you do that is just right click on either of them this menu pops up go to edit in go to edit in Photoshop's elements 12 editor and what will happen is this dialog box pops up we're gonna edit a copy we always want to edit copies uh, we're gonna use a TIFF Pro Photo RGB although the color space doesn't really matter I have mine set to Pro Photo you could have yours set to what you feel comfortable with um, the bit depth is important though with elements we have to use 8 bits per component we cannot use 16 bits per component. Um, it will. You could send an image over there at 16 bits, but you won't be able to do a lot with it. Um, Elements is kind of limited because it's you know seven times cheaper than Photoshop. Um, Photoshop you could do 16-bit files, but in Elements you've got to use the smaller and I guess less resolute file but to tell you the truth most people can't tell the difference so 8 bits per component is more than um, good enough the resolution could be 240 or 300 I have mine at 300 and no compression so you just click edit so what's going to happen first is um, Lightroom is creating the copies and you could see the um, you know this uh, uh, whatever here showing that it's making the copy I drew a blank but anyways when it when it makes the copies it immediately sends them over to elements and opens elements and what they're going to be is they're going to be in separate tabs what we got to do though is we need them one on top of the other as layers so what we're going to do is we're going to take this one with the clouds and we're going to drag it over and put it on top of the one with um, you know where we want the clouds to go so go to the one with the clouds and click the move tool the move tools right there and what you're gonna do is you just with your left mouse button click on it and go up to this tab when that becomes active move your uh, cursor towards the middle now here's a little tip hold that left mouse button but down the whole time hold the shift key in when you drop it let go of the left mouse button now and you'll actually drop it right centered on top of the other one if you don't hold that shift key down it will just drop it off center and you'll have to go through the trouble of dragging it around and getting it centered so right now as you look at the layer panel we have the cloud layer on top of the um, layer where we want to put the clouds um, that's exactly how we want it now first turn off the cloud layer by clicking on this little eyeball and you can see it's it's turned off now highlight the background layer which is this layer that we want to put the clouds in what we're gonna do is we're gonna select this sky so we're gonna use um, the um, quick selection tool which is right here and it has three tools in one it has the magic wand tool it has a brush uh, selection tool and it has the quick selection tool make sure you're clicked on the click quick selection tool and what we do is just go up in the left I'm gonna start at the left hand side and just kinda of draw across the sky and you can see these are called marching ants and it selected the sky Now you can see around the trees it didn't do such a great job so what we're gonna do is we're gonna refine the edge so you go down here to the bottom panel again and where it says refine edge and click on that you can see this dialog box pops up. Now what we're doing here is we're telling um, we're telling elements to look closer 
at this selection right in this area and the way we do that is two different things in this case we're going to turn the radius up a little bit um, between 5 and 10 will be fine you could try clicking smart radius too when you do this you could all look you could look through here and see if your selection seems to be improving if you go up too high you can see it's not doing anything anymore so just back it off a little bit until you see that it's you know seems to be doing a decent job um, it's hard you know it's guesswork really but the main thing we're gonna do is we're gonna use this brush right here and we're gonna paint on this and wherever we paint we're telling elements to look very carefully at this area and try to do a better selection what we're gonna do first is we're gonna get a bigger brush if you have a center mouse wheel you could spin that and it will affect the brush size if you don't use the bracket keys on your keyboard the right bracket key makes your um, brush bigger left bracket key smaller so I'm going to use a pretty big brush we're just going to paint across here and mainly wherever blue sky is coming through those trees I want to make sure I paint it in that area and go like this as simple as that now you'll see when I let go of the left mouse button it, you can see the uh, selection is much better it's a lot more detailed now we want to we're not going to do anything else we're going to output it to the sele to a selection and click OK now you can see the um, the actual marching ants they're a lot more complex and detailed so we have a much better selection around the tree tr tree tops here what we're going to do now is we're going to click on the top layer we're going to turn it on by clicking on the eyeball and now you can see that selection has been transferred to this layer to this cloud layer now all you gotta do is you gotta um, click and create a mask and right up here you can see this little icon that's like a rectangle with a circle in it that's the mask uh, button click on that and like magic the sky is now in the image and that's really all there is to it now there's a couple more things I'm going to show you um, it didn't affect it in my image but sometimes around the treetops you'll get kind of a white glow and um, it's, especially if it's a sunset if you have a sunset and you're putting it in there you'll get kind of a white glow and I'm going to show you how you could get rid of that um, what you would do is over here in the bottom you can see where it says effects click on that and you can see there's uh, filters styles and effects we want to use styles and we want to use a drop shadow so right there drop shadow and we're gonna use this one soft edge so you just double click on that and it's gonna come up with uh, the canvas size is smaller equal blah 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 just click OK don't worry about it and you can see how this got darker and hopefully you saw that um, now sometimes you have to adjust it a little and I'm going to show you how to do that go down here where it says layers and click on layers and right here at the top you could see let me zoom in a little bit you can see it says FX we want to double click on that and you can see this um, style setting uh, box comes up what you would do is just look at the image and you could probably like the lighting angle you could spin it around you can see how it's changing and you could just spin it around so you're getting rid of that white glow now as I mentioned my image doesn't have it but sometimes you will you could move the size a little bit you can move the distance opacity so just move it around until you get rid of that white glow and click OK and you're done now the other thing I wanted to show you is sometimes when you drop the sky in it's not perfectly centered or it's not exactly where you want it and that's real easy to manipulate too right now this uh, image of the sky is locked to the layer mask now we want to unlock it because if we try moving the sky we'll be moving the mask with it we don't want to move the mask the mask has to be set to these trees so we want it to stay there so just click on this little chain link right there and it's unlocked now they're independent of one another I, I could move one Oh, and without affecting the other so make sure you're clicked on the clouds and what we're gonna do is it's called free transform and the shortcut key is command or control T as in Tom 
and you can see these little handles came up on the uh, image now. What we're going to do is we're going to zoom out. If you have a Mac, it's Control, or if you have a PC, it's Control minus. If you have a Mac, it's Command minus, and just zoom out a little bit. And the reason why is you could just see a little better what you're doing, and we're going to be moving the clouds this way. Now you can see now I moved it this way, but we have all this over here. So we're just going to stretch it out. We go over here and we get stretch it out like that. And then we can maybe move them up just a little bit like that. And when you're ready, for, you're satisfied, you moved them where you like, click the checkbox. And you have it um, now transformed to where you want. Hit Command or Control 0 to fit to screen. And there, we drop clouds in. It was really relatively simple, I think. Um, now we're going to just exit out of here. Um, go to the easiest way, trust me, is just go to Photoshop Elements Editor and quit. Just quit. It's going to ask you to save it, so make sure you save it. Now it's just going to come out about Organizer. Just click OK. Um, I'm going to rename it. I'm going to name it uh, Sky Swap. All right. Layers. We're going to keep the layers, keep all that stuff. And we're going to keep it in that folder and click Save comes up with this. There's no compression. Uh, we want it to the top interleaved. We want you could have IBM PC or Mac. It doesn't really matter. If you have a PC, use a PC. I'd say if you have a Mac, use a Mac. Um, we want faster saves, bigger files. So RLE because we don't want any compression. That's pretty much no compression. Um, we just want uh, the file. We want all the data possible in the file and click OK and then it's going to including layers will increase size you could click these don't show again if you want and then click OK now uh, with Photoshop it would automatically go right back into Lightroom but with um, elements it doesn't so we have to find it now you have to remember kinda of where we um, saved it and in that case I believe we saved it we go to the library and I think I think it was right here maybe so it's not it's not going to be there yet so what you do is you go to library and you go to synchronize folder and there's a folder there it is you can see import new photos so it's right there click synchronize and there it is right there now it's in Photoshop or it's in I'm sorry Lightroom so that's it that's uh, simply how you could drop a sky into an image using um, elements how you would take it out of Lightroom and then get it back in Lightroom so that's it if you guys have any questions if you feel feel free to email me I'm really behind on my emails as usual so it might take me a while to get back to you I will get back to you though it just might take me a couple weeks um, if you guys could do me a favor and subscribe to my YouTube channel I would really appreciate that that's it for now I'll talk to you guys